My name is Steve Regan um, and this is my fourth video in the series um, and I've actually built my toggle switch binary controller um, and here it is. Um, you can see I've given it a sort of retro look. Um, if I just uh, point out a few things, that's the uh, liquid crystal display screen, it's 16 by 2 uh, characters. You've got here a potentiometer, that's to um, make sure that they, this is, the contrast is brightened or dimmed there. You've got an on off switch there and you've got a data selection switch there either on instruction when it's on zero or data when it's switched up and you've got these binary um, toggle switches at the bottom there um, which you can set the binary instruction or data that you want to send to the LCD screen and you have a send button there which actually um, sends the instruction or the data to the screen. Inside the box, um, it's all sealed up now, but basically it's just wires and soldering. There's no um, CPU or um, processor in there. Um, there is one chip in there which is called a Smith trigger, and I had to use that because I had a problem with electronic bounce, which is called when I press the toggle switch there, it was sending more than one data signal to the screen. So I had to use one chip and uh, capacitors and resistors in order to draw down the power so that it only sent one switch. That took me um, at least a, two weeks to solve and source the part for, but lucky enough that. Uh, the actual chip that I bought only cost me about a pound. Um, I had to buy five of them basically because uh, they didn't come in that. Um, also what I did was I got a normal phone charger here with a USB uh, socket in the bottom. It's five volt and I had to then splice the cable, the other end of the USB cable and then um, using um, uh, or try using uh, sources on the internet find out how to convert a jack socket uh, to take the power off a USB lead. So that's all, all that's done. So um, there's the power supply goes in the side uh, like that. Um, so I had to, using um, a hot glue, um, put that in position. So everything is there. It's a mass of wires inside. I'm just going to plug it in now. And then what I'm going to do is angle the camera down um, so that you, I can give you a demonstration of how it works. So just bear with me a second while I just move that into position there. Okay, and then I'll turn, tilt the camera down and give you a quick demonstration of how it works. Um, it works very similar to the third video, although that was simulated. Um, so there it is there. Um, basically what I'm going to do is power it up and then I'm going to show you um, basically what it does. So the first thing we want to do is switch on the power and as you can see um, we've got the display screen there. I have to uh, zoom in and out on this um, when required. Um, and what you've got to do is first of all um, um, you use a set of binary instructions to first set it up. Now the students will get documents such as these little programs. They will also get um, some schematic data sheets uh, like this to, to, uh, to learn how to actually uh, code the instructions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in the first instruction which is 00111000. Now I've got to make sure that the switch is in instruction mode and press it and that should send an instruction to the screen and what that does is it says it's going to be eight data lines, that's eight bit, um, two lines on the actual screen and basically it's going to be the characters are going to be five by times eight. So the next thing I'll do is I'll turn these two down um, and then all the uh, lowest bits up there press it again. Um, and then uh, I'm going to use the potentiometer uh, here. You can see, you should be able to see the cursor flashing in the corner. Finally, I'm going to, that what it does is turn the cursor on, display on, and the cursor to blinking, as you can see. So I'm now going to switch it to um, uh, the mode to set the uh, cursor position and set it to input mode. 
so I'm going to send that to the screen now. Last thing I want to do is just a, a, a caution, if they're all on zero here and that on one, as you see in the second video and press that, it just clears the screen if there's any data. So I'm going to now flick it up to uh, that position there. I'm going to spe spell my daughter's name, which is Anna, and if you know your binary, that's two, sorry, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. So the letter A in ASCII is um, 65. Okay, so I'm going to need to set that. Um, and how do you know that? Because the students will also get this diagram here telling them how to, how at the top there uh, is the bits to set in order to get the different letters upper and lower case. So that will all be, it's in the third video notes. Um, I think you need to do that. Um, and also the booklet will eventually end up in this video here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to spell out the name A, so that's 64 and 1, which is 65, and I get the letter A. Okay, if I just zoom into that, um, you should see that the A is on the screen there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put N in there, now, if I remember, N is the same uh, with these all up and that down there, okay? So I believe that is 14 on this lower part added to uh, that, which is uh, 64. Okay, press that there and I get a capital N. Well, I'm going to spell it out in capitals. I'll show you how I'm going to uh, rub that out and put it. So I'll put two N's in there. And then I go back to the letter A. Oops, and I've made a mistake. So what if I, if I made a mistake, I drop it down to instruction and then put it into cursor mode here so I can move the cursor along. Okay, and you can see that it's going back that way. And what I can do when I've moved the cursor along, go back up to data mode, set it to the letter A again, and then I can press it. So you can completely control this screen. Now I've got Anna on the screen there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to lowercase um, uh, n, to lowercase n's, and um, basically uh, so look, two lowercase n's and uh, the letter A which is down. So bear with me a minute. So first of all I'm going to slick it, switch it down to instruction again. I'm going to move the cursor, so that's that position there, across to there. I can move it back again if you've gone too far. Move it one space back. Okay, and now I can put it back into this mode here. Now what I've got to do is work out now what lowercase n is. And it says here that basically you've got you've got to set the first, the top half to um, high and high, so that's uh, 110111 and then down here you've got to set them all to and much like we did before but we've added 32 to the character so what we do then is press N N and now we knew that the letter A in uppercase was that which is 64 and 65 but if we add 32 to it we get lowercase a and that's how the cap shifts works as I said in the second video the difference between um, uppercase a is 32 you add 32 to it so uppercase a is 65 you add 32 to it 97 which is lowercase a now what you can do is shift things across so I'm going to put Anna in the center of the screen here um, basically where she belongs <laughs> so stick her in the center of the screen so what I need to do is go back to instruction mode there and then what I do is go into uh, screen shift mode now when I when I am in screen shift mode and I press the send now it moves the cursor across like that so if I flick this switch here which is the third bit in 
then it moves the cursor back again. But if I knock this switch up here, it goes into scroll mode. So if I scroll it like that, it goes that way. Um, and if I want to scroll it right, oops, um, let's try that again. I pressed the wrong switch there. So if you want to scroll it right, you just press it like that and you keep hitting it and there it goes into the middle of the screen. I'll just take it back one. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Now I'm going to move the cursor um, to the side a bit so we can actually see what's going on here. Uh, let's go cursor to the side. Okay, just move it over here somewhere so it's out the way. Right, we'll drop it off the screen. So there we got, we can set the cursor off the screen and there we've got um, Anna on the screen there. Okay. So that is what this does. Now it can do a lot more because actually if you see an animated liquid crystal display screen you can see them scrolling the letters scrolling left and right and that's by sending a sequence of binary code instructions to the actual um, uh, LCD screen. Okay so that is it and as you can see I've retroed it up a bit with um, uh, some stickers and numbers to make it look good but that's it complete um, it's taken me what um, I made mean, about a month to build and that's because I've had to wait for the parts and that but I came across a few problems while I was building it I had the electronic bounce on this switch here which meant that it sent multiple um, letters to the screen I also had to get over wiring it up properly inside and there was an awful lot of soldering which I'm not really a fay with but I had a go. This was all um, on an inspiration from uh, a project that I saw on the internet which did um, a similar thing but it didn't show you the, the total build and it didn't have some of the switches I've got here but uh, and it didn't go into um, all the instructions so I decided to build my own and experiment to see if this would work. Uh, my next project I bought myself um, an old uh, Z80 um, a processor which was in the old Sinclair Spectrum and also the Z81 and the Z80 before the ZX81 and the ZX80 before that and I'm going to start experimenting with uh, making some uh, my own computer uh, probably using um, a liquid crystal display um, to do that rather than the full screen maybe one that's about um, twice the side or, or deeper than this and maybe a bigger screen see if I can do that I'm going to experiment later with some of these because I do believe you, you can um, store other shapes and graphics within these you can make user defined ones so um, this is going to be used by students to, for computer science to learn a bit of binary and how um, instructions are sent to control chips in order to control them so that's it then, uh, thank you for watching um, and uh, my next series of videos will be hopefully how I built my computer system.